A hunter's guide to social look distancing. We look at how we can all sensibly and practically get back out stalking, foxing, pigeon shooting and game shooting without jeopardising all the good work achieved by lockdown. One, two. I reckon it's about two, perfect. <laughs> Plus, passion and pulse rates. Will a heart monitor pick up Paul's buck fever? Who's got the green light? We look at how different countries are managing their hunting communities. Johnny Crockett is back with more hedgerow deliciousness. This time it's thistles and nettles. If you want to know what inulin is like, it's... And it's a year since UK pest management went into meltdown as Natural England trashed the general licences on the orders of Chris Packham. We visit a grouse moor which for a second spring in a row is losing red listed birds because of government red tape. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Area where they, where they don't fence, they just tree guard. Of course, you got bucks going in there and it's just smashing up the tree guards and hammering the trees. What will shooting and hunting sports in the UK look like after lockdown? We join professional deer and shoot manager Paul Childerley on a Roebuck stalk to find out. When people turn up, they'll be in their own vehicles. If we're hunting in a different area, we'll have to drive to that area. Um, in separate vehicles. Then if they've got their own rifle, that's not a problem. But if they need to use a state rifle, then you give them the rifle in the case. They've got wipes to sterilise the rifle before they use it. They're onto the range. They, they have their, their practice shots, get them up to speed. Put it into your vehicle, because your rifle, you've got to go on the road. or if you, Then you drive to the area, and then they take it out. So, you know, there's lots of different bits we've got to put together. At the moment, under the coronavirus lockdown in the UK, there is no guided or recreational stalking, hunting or shooting. Advice from many police firearms inquiry officers, and they're the ones who decide whether you get to keep your guns or not, is that pest and crop protection are permitted. But please call 101 to let them know you're out. With more people exercising in the countryside, there is a greater chance police will hear about your gunshots. And don't take this as gospel. FEOs have lots of different rules. Some allow you to drive to undertake pest control, some do not. Check with yours before you make plans. We last filmed Paul in mid-March. At that time, he still had two weeks of clients for Chinese water deer, all cancelled. He had already started to see bookings for his game shooting cancelled. Then he had to lose staff. We were having a bit of banter and a bit of a joke that I said, oh, well, you know, this time, in a month's time, you boys be gone. And like two weeks later, I was like saying, look, boys, we're going to have to have a serious chat um, by the end of the week, I think. And then, of course, obviously now we're, we're on, back down to on my own. Um, lucky that the guys, uh, Fraser's got a job up in Scotland on a game farm. Um, and then Sam's onto the, the contract at the moment with farming and then going to come back with me in August. Paul's shoot is still going ahead, and while he's doing the work of three, yeah, he right, is yeah. spending time working out how he can safely reopen his business while observing social distancing. It needs a little thought. I've downscaled the one shoot just to walked up days, and the other shoot's going to be run about 75%. Um, and the teams that have booked, I've basically emailed them, but then I had a conversation with most teams of how the day would, would run at the moment, how I see it would run. We got the fortunate thing of having a shoot lodge. It's a big barn, it's got a good space, so you can go in there, you can have a coffee three, three four metres away. We could do the, the talk and the briefing outside in, in, the, in front of the shoot lodge and have coffees out there. Um, are going to pick the pegs? I'll basically put them on the table, they can walk forward, like we did in, um, like we did in uh, Portugal. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, that, that's easy. That's Drinks in the field, like normal, and then we do maybe a, a tapas type um, lunch. We might do, it might all change, um, but that's how I'm sort of foreseeing at the moment. And then the beaters are the other thing. For our shoot, it's quite handy because we could do drive and the beaters could go round to the other side and then do the other drive 
and then work the way down the estate. So our drives will be totally different. It won't work as well. It's nice to go around and go to a different, totally different area. So it's, it's going to be a different format and everyone's going to have to basically get on, get on with it. Yeah, suck it up. You all right, team? Right, a bit worried about the beating side of things as well because a lot of our beaters are, are very old. Um, a lot of retired guys, and they might not want to come out. So it's my next conversation. <laughs> they're going to find out <laughs> probably Wednesday. <laughs> but it is a conversation that I'm going to have to have sort of like going forward to probably, you know, August time. Who wants to? Because it's their, their choice. Um, and explain exactly what I've explained to the guns. This is what we propose and go from there, really. So what about today? David has a radio mic on Paul and can pick up his whispers at a range that others won't. Right, let's go. Before you go, yep. as far as communication, do you think that when you're actually taking someone out, you need to have a bit more of a system? You know, maybe a bit of blackboard with some chalk or to write on your phone. You know, you've got a Scribble app on your phone and stuff like that. What? Because it's, I can hear you. You know, if you whisper. Oh, yeah, but if I, if I was going to someone, They'd be carrying a rifle and say I'm two metres in front, I'll be spying, say I spot a roebuck, see it's the right one to take, I'll basically just melt away to the side, the thumbs up, you know, neck shoot it because it's in the grass, heart shoot it, and they're there, wait till he turns, wait till he turns, yep, yeah, easy. You know, you're going to not get you know, your uh, success rate's going to go down a bit, but, you know, it's going to make it more of a challenge, so that's what it's all about, so. How does one melt away? <laughs> like Predator, on Predator film. <laughs> Camouflage, see? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Interesting times, interesting times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I miss our connection. I feel that we're disconnected. One, two. How far? I reckon it's about two, perfect. <laughs> Stay away. Oh Stay away. Good. Okay. Are you Let's ready? Go on then. Let's go. I think if we can do it with a camera, the amount of times we have, um, and sometimes two or three people, I think, you know, I think you'd be able to get round the, the out in the field situation. I think the, probably the guide is best to just do all the rallying because they've got to handle it. Um, it goes back into sort of your larder, your vehicle. Yeah, it's, it's something new, but I think you evolve and sort of work and get round the safest and best way possible, really. Row stalking Two. is one of Paul's passions. Buck fever is a real thing. Ideally, Seeing an animal in your sights affects RNA, folk. So you don't accuse RNA, Paul of being a coronavore. Yeah. We're going to measure that excitement RNA, today RNA. with a heart RNA. monitor. This is his walking rate. A bit skyline. This is what happens when he sees a shootable buck. Amazing. 72. So it wasn't rushing it. The challenge. Definitely the challenge. Then there's a fox. So foxes don't do it for you either. Yeah, but I can't shoot them here. The brain knows I can't shoot them, so I only got a little bit excited rather than full mode. <laughs> That's the reason why. Bye. Our closest encounter is with a rodo. Is she sitting with a male companion? On her own, I think. Possibility of a buck being lay wet next to her. I mean, have you noticed any changes in wildlife behaviour at all with um, just yeah. less people around? So, I've more disturbance this year than ever before. I've had people in pheasant release pens walking through, mountain bikes in release pens, people with dogs, dogs chasing uh, pheasants, ducks, moorhens, coots, everything. A goose down the lake got killed the other day, um, one of the grey lags, you know. <clears throat> There's people are everywhere. Um, I, put up a, I put up another 15 signs um, about three weeks ago. Cause they've, but people just walk, what I can't understand, 
I got the sign saying private land to keep out, so pretty psych. Blunt. Blunt, yeah, because uh, sorry, it's not a footpath, not working. And uh, actually, when I'm putting them up, and there'll be one down there and one here, I'm putting up the second one, they've already walked past the first one. Oh, I didn't see the sign, big red sign like this, you know. Anyway, um, and yeah, so big are all fine, it's just, you know, I don't know why you don't just like, just. Re re well, yeah, re re respect that, like what other people are doing and nature and everything else, but there you go. Hopefully it won't be a problem next spring. The weather is not helping matters this morning and we end up with an enjoyable walk in the countryside, breathing in the birdsong, but no buck. It's an odd time for all of us. We need to be prepared to pick up where we left off. With changes in workflow and operations, it's all achievable. Um, but it, it's going to need people just working together. Together, yeah, yeah definitely. You know, if everyone understands it, you know, all you need is some idiot who, you know, is blasé about it. This has to be really sensible. Like, I mean, but shooters are sensible. They have to be. Well, it's quite funny, actually. You look at our community of shooters and hunters, we abide by all the rules so far. I think generally want to be safe and want to, you know, get the job done right. So yeah, fingers crossed. If you have a clever idea for observing social distancing on clay, shooting and hunting grounds and ranges, please let us know by dropping me an email, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. We are a law-abiding community and we will develop systems that work safely while allowing businesses such as Paul's to get back up and running properly again. And if you fancy measuring your own heart rate, there's a link to the device in the description below. Thank you, Paul. And please let us know what you think. And please, this is not us asking or calling for the end to lockdown. That's like sitting in the back of the car and saying, oh, we nearly there yet. But we will come out. And when we do, we all want to know how to behave. Now let's have a look at a survey which we conducted last week to see how other countries are managing their hunting as they come out of lockdown. As you can see, most of the world is either pink, it's still locked down, or it's yellow. We don't know what's happening. There are tight restrictions on who can hunt or shoot and where. We made up this map because we asked you, the viewers, what's happening in your countries. And there's a link in the description below which takes you to what you told us. As you can see, the Scandinavian countries are quickest off the block there, with the German-speaking nations not far behind them, and North America tying for fourth place. I expect we'll see Australia, the United Kingdom and Ireland. So thank you very much to everyone who helped with that survey. And now over to someone who didn't, it's David on the Field Sports Channel, News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. West Yorkshire Police have confiscated the guns of persecuted Leeds pest controller Barry Swain. Barry was doing legal work for a farmer whose land was overrun by Canada geese when West Yorkshire Police bowed to complaints from local antis. Barry claims that police took his guns because they believe a claim he'd been selling goose meat to restaurants. West Yorkshire Police counter claims that officers have the power to revoke an individual's firearm certificate based on thorough assessment of a range of criteria but refuses to give details, only that it made the decision following a detailed review of the circumstances. Barry has meticulously filmed all his encounters with antis and police, recording the routine harassment and apparently hapless police responses on video. Basque says it backs Barry 100% and slams West Yorkshire police as ignorant. I want to make it clear, we do a lot of good work with the police, but just occasionally you just get the feeling that things have gone awry slightly and, and the situation that Barry's found himself in probably is along those lines and we're going to do everything we can to help him. The British media is celebrating sea eagles. Farmers not so enthusiastic, complaining they are providing free food for the birds. Several released on the Isle of Wight have settled in Yorkshire, Kent and Norfolk, making it impossible for the charity that released them to keep its promise to feed them fish. A problem compounded by the coronavirus lockdown. So according to farmers, the birds are snatching newborn lambs instead. The Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation, one of the organisations behind the eagle release, has offered no evidence of eagle feeding stations. Crofters on and near Mull say birds are sometimes taking two lambs a day to feed their young. While farmers suffer, UK newspapers showed their support for the project by faithfully printing a press release from Roy Dennis this week. 
A kite is missing, and it's the fault of grouse shooters, according to the RSPB. As the birds' rights group prepares to take on game shooters with its review into pheasant shooting, it's still fighting a major front in its war on grouse shooting. The RSPB says it was monitoring a GPS tag attached to a bird in June 2019, when it blinked out on moors near Derwent Reservoir in April. Despite a lack of evidence, the RSPB says grouse moor managers might be to blame and has persuaded police to investigate. The civil servant at the heart of the disastrous handling of the general licences crisis in 2019 is now Natural England's chief executive. Marion Spain will earn circa £125,000 a year, according to the job ad. In his statement making the appointment, Environment Secretary George Eustace refers to Spain's excellent work over the last year. However, wildlife managers across the UK are appalled that she's been rewarded with a tax-funded six-figure salary after the damage she did to farming and wildlife in 2019. Rural areas will be hit hard by the coronavirus lockdown. The Daily Telegraph says that shoots are preparing for a season, but there is no guarantee they will go ahead. The newspaper estimates the cost to the rural economy could be more than £600 million. It quotes analysis by Guns on Pegs, which shows shoot days earn more than £1 billion a year. The newspaper also quotes Adrian Blackmore of the Countryside Alliance, who says that shooting is the linchpin of many rural communities and supports the same as 74,000 full-time jobs. Field Sports Channel's research suggests that more than two-thirds of shoots will go ahead as normal this season. A recruitment consultancy owner who also ran a gun shop has been charged with murdering his wife. According to The Sun, Peter Hartshorn Jones shot his wife Silke at their farmhouse in Suffolk. His LinkedIn profile says he runs a gun business specialising in the sale and locating of the finest sporting English and Scottish shotguns. Mrs Hartshorn Jones was a solicitor. They had twin sons aged eight. Scottish authorities are investigating pollution in the River Levin in Fife. Anglers are worried it's killing off salmon and could have wider implications for the local ecology. The Scottish Environment Protection Agency blames the orange colour of the river on an old coal mine. Members of the River Levin Angling Club say that five years ago they could catch 50 to 60 salmon, but now they get none. Armed police searched the Kent countryside on Saturday after reports of a tiger on the loose. But it turned out to be a sculpture in the village of Underriver. Artist Juliet Simpson made her tiger from chicken wire 20 years ago, then placed it in her garden. A neighbour warned her that police were responding to a phone call about a big cat in the area. She told reporters the tiger hasn't bothered anyone before. Results of the Eat Game Awards 2019 are out. They include Best Shop, Chef, Pub and Farmer's Market. Among them, judges from Gunmaker Purdy and Basque's Taste of Game Initiative voted game chef Mike Robinson their champion of champions. During the coronavirus lockdown, Mike has been offering game recipes via Facebook, including this one, spring fallow venison with ratatouille. Canada's government has been slammed after banning the wrong guns after a mass shooting. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced a knee-jerk ban on guns with calibres of more than two centimetres. However, he accidentally includes some 12-gauge shotguns. Now Canadian shooting organisations are calling for the official who made the blunder to resign, as well as the revocation of Trudeau's order. The Prime Minister says there will be a two-year amnesty period to allow people who already own the guns to comply. His Liberal Party promised a buyback programme in the last election, which could cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. Trudeau says that hunters don't need an AR-15 to bring down a deer, but gun owners point out that AR-15s have been illegal to hunt with since the 1970s and can only be used on approved shooting ranges. The government admits it doesn't know how many guns are included, so can't say how much the buyback will cost. A hunter in South Africa has had his social media account shut down after he was targeted by antis. Instagram deleted the account for Jason Stone, who runs safaris across Africa, after a woman told her 100,000 followers to complain about him. Jason spent a year developing his profile, posting pictures and videos, which he used as marketing for his business. He still has his account on Facebook, which has many of the same content. He told us the persecution by an Instagram influencer has cost him dearly. It's a massive loss for my business. And uh, I don't understand how Instagram can get away with this and be biased towards hunters. It, it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. 
Staying in South Africa and professional hunters there are asking for help as they see their livelihoods suffer as a consequence of the pandemic. Salom de Villiers is organising a GoFundMe campaign in support of the community of hunters and associated workers at the front lines of conservation and anti-poaching at a time when their businesses are on hold because of coronavirus. Travel bans have crippled tourism, Solom says, affecting hunters, trackers, skinners, chefs, cooks, admin staff, lodge staff, and many more in more than 300 hunting companies, which accounts for about 7,000 people. She warned not to let anti-hunting groups strike a victory in the midst of this world pandemic. Vegan diets may increase the likelihood of depression. According to a US study, people with plant-based diets are twice as likely to take drugs for mental illness and nearly three times as likely to contemplate suicide. The University of Alabama researchers wrote that the study does not support avoiding meat consumption for overall psychological health benefits. A South African court has apparently released two men accused of poaching rhino horns. The suspects were arrested on Friday the 24th of April, caught with six rhino horns worth six million rand, around £250,000, according to an article on the anti-poaching Facebook group. The court said it decided to grant them bail because of COVID-19, without explaining why. They were released on condition they did not interfere with the investigation or witnesses and surrendered their passports. The Post says the case is postponed to late June. It described the release as shocking and alarming as it flouts normal procedure to hold suspects for seven days before bail can be approved while IDs and criminal records are checked. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. Police have been called to a Sikh temple in central California after there were reports of gunfire. A local county sheriff's office said responding officers detained five people at the scene. They quickly realized the incident wasn't a hate crime, but just the neighbors shooting at squirrels. Local TV news station says three men were cited for negligent discharge of a firearm and police confiscated two handguns and three rifles. Negative media about wombat hunting has brought about a ban. Following media pressure, it's now illegal to shoot them in the Australian state of Victoria without a control order. In 2019, a local newspaper said wealthy tourists were hunting the marsupials for sport near Melbourne. There was a wave of public sympathy for the animals helped by another story about an off-duty police officer escaping criminal charges after throwing rocks at a wombat in South Australia. A video of the incident went viral. Local police commissioner Grant Stevens described the officer's behaviour as totally abhorrent, but as a traditional Aboriginal man, John Cock had an appropriate permit to hunt wombats for food. Thanks to Damien Ivan for sending us the source material for this story. Is there an alligator living in New York's Steinmetz Park? Locals claim there is a big reptile living in the park's pond. Police set up a camera near the pond to try and get a shot of the gator, but came up with nothing. The Department for Environmental Conservation says it's a large common snapping turtle and points out there are no alligator tracks anywhere near the pond. Across the border in Canada, and police responded to reports of an alligator crawling around a storm drain. But a surveillance video showed the animal was a beaver. And finally, an online shopper was baffled when he couldn't find the package he'd been told had been delivered. Martin Hind from Kent then checked his security camera video to find the culprit. He'd complained the box was poked through a gate and left in a puddle. Then around 1am, a fox turned up. The curious creature probed the package for a few minutes, then dragged it off to who knows where. Martin hasn't found the box, which he said was from Hermes and contained electrical goods. Let's hope they weren't too pricey. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And you can see more news on our website. There's a link in the description below. Now, time to help the British gun trade with Bargain Hunter, four places offering four great lockdown deals available online. First up, cheap Bushnell binos from Uttings of Norwich. The Bushnell H28x42 binoculars have an MRP of £199.99. Uttings is offering them, while stocks last, at just 89 quid. Simpson Brothers Gun Shop in Cambridgeshire is offering a 10% discount on all its online products. All you need to do is enter the code SAFE at home in capitals at the checkout. Offer ends on the 15th of May 2020. 
New product for air gunners. Enfield Sports, just outside Birmingham, has developed a CO2 seal protector. It has been in testing for more than two years. Called the Enfield Air Gun Seal Safe and designed to prevent seal damage, it comes in a 28ml bottle priced at £5.99. Pence. And finally, Longthorn Gun Makers near Northampton is offering a competitively priced box lock. It is £11,995 for the standard model, just under seventeen grand for the Sporter Deluxe, and a fiver off twenty two k for the side-plated model. Find out more about all these deals and their links at fchannel slash bargainhunter. Now, 12 months ago, Natural England pulled the rug on the general licences. 12 months on, are we in a better place? Grouse shooter George Wynne Darley from Yorkshire says no, he's trying very hard to keep ground nesting birds alive, despite Natural England. Scavengers like this badger eat wild bird eggs. Normally, grouse shooter George Wynne Darley is able to shoot and trap some scavengers, such as corvids and gulls, but not this year and not last year. He blames British bureaucracy. We have not been given licenses to control the crows and magpies and gulls uh, uh, on SSSI moorland and this is the second year running that they've not got the licenses out in time for the critical bird nesting period um, in, in the spring. Um, Natural England have known for uh, over a year uh, that they're going to have the same number of applications this year as they had last and this is unacceptable. I don't understand why uh, the curlew and other red listed species on the moors have to suffer uh, because of, of their uh, inefficiency and ineptness. We can't do the predator control on grouse moors to save the eggs and save the chicks. They, they, will not, uh, they, they too will go the way of the curlews and the rest of the country. This problem is, being, is not being caused by climate change, it's not being caused by land intensification, it's not being caused uh, by um, uh, changes in, in land cover or, 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 or anything of that nature. This is caused entirely by the government's own nature conservation laws and their ineptness in delivering them. We've had quite a busy year. The anti-shooting group Wild Justice, run by BBC presenter Chris Packham, forced Natural England to rescind the general licences on or near SPA such as Spawnton in 2019, effectively banning pest control on about 10% of the UK. Spawnton is a long way from Natural England's comfortable London offices. George is worried his beloved moor is now a snack bar for magpies and gulls. Wild Justice don't like the idea that grouse moors are actually the stronghold of um, species like curlew and lapwing um, and that they are actually where we are going to end up with a surplus breeding population if we're allowed to uh, continue to do the management as we have done for uh, many decades. And that sticks in their gullet, they find that very uncomfortable uh, and they can't accept it and, they, and uh, this is a, a means of attacking it to make it more difficult and less successful um, and so they can then hopefully turn around and say uh, that uh, they don't need us. Uh, well actually they do and those birds particularly need us um, e even if the people in Wild Justice don't. Wild Justice says grass shooters are the problem not the solution. They say grass moor is typically a wildlife desert except there's this, a curlew, and these, lapwings, and this, a kestrel. Spawnton Moor on the North York Moors is teeming with wildlife. Located on the southern edge near Huddenley Hole, the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust calls it a mecca for bird watchers. That is a green plover, or peewit, or lapwing, or um, you come from Middlesbrough, so you might, in Cleveland, you might recognise it as a tearfid. I believe it's got something like 34 different names. George leads a team of conservationists on Spawnton. He is kind enough to take me out for a birding twitch. All the species are recovering from historic lows uh, and we are seeing uh, an expansion both in the number of um, breeding pairs um, 
uh, birds that you just see around in winter etc and the extent of their range everything is expanding and getting much greater cock grass got a very very pronounced wattle and little and a little bit darker they go this this time of year as the hens go slightly lighter um, Meadow pipit striking off for you so just from this one spot in whatever we've had five minutes we've been here or something so a pair, a pair of grouse, curlew, green plover, meadow pipit, kestrel. All the species of raptor in the UK are, are improving and recovering. Um, uh, and many of them have now got to um, population levels that have never previously been recorded um, in, in history. Um, you know, they, they've, they've, they've completely achieved it and, and, and more besides. It has taken a lot of hard work to get the moor into the state it is today. This was all solid, solid bracken on, on, on here. Everything in front of us, all the way down this valley, all that bank side, all on top of that hill, all between the two becks. Um, and pretty as far as you can see, solid, solid bracken. And we've got rid of it and brought it back to heather and these other natural mixes like um, bog myrtle there. Now George and his team are focusing on keeping the moors moist by building leaky dams like this one made from local rocks and creating pools further down the hill. This little watercourse here planted a few extra trees to um, as well uh, keep the stock out of it and, and then creating little dams like this here um, and we've got and further ones up and further ones downstream all to sort of slow the flow. The idea is to have lots of them and the cumulative effect. So that would reduce um, flooding impacts further downstream and, and uh, improve the quality of the rivers by keeping the sediment out of the river and keeping it back up on at the moors where it's come from. I think we can do much more things to keep more water on the moors for longer, which will help the biodiversity and all the um, wildlife up here as well as um, sheep and, and, and things like that and provide a source of um, uh, water for wildfire fighting in, in the, if the worst ever happens and we have to tackle one of those you know which could destroy everything up here. The most important thing is that this heather um, ha has to be managed if it, if it, it, it it's a huge fuel load the fire brigades absolutely understand uh, the importance of managing the fuel load um, uh, and that if they um, are called out to a very serious summer fire it's because there hasn't been enough prescribed burning and cutting done um, to break up that fuel load, reduce uh, the, the, the problem. As a part of that debate there is um, a threat to, to remove the, the, the ability to, to burn and manage these heather moorlands um, it, it, or some aspects of it in some ways. So two, you've got two um, peewits flying around there too, there we go, it's very distinctive lapwing behaviour. One of the great, uh, uh, um, many great public benefits that come on the back of, of driven grass moor management is, is the fact we create this wonderful open landscape which um, uh, is all open access. Um, and, uh, but in, in addition, it has a network of public rights of way and linear permissive paths and bridleways um, over it. And, and I don't think people recognise that enough. Two geese just flown over the top. Yeah, I got those. Yeah. Thank you, George, for your time, and thank you, Ben, for making that film. Next up, for the budding vegans amongst you, or at least those who want to add a bit of F plan to your Atkins diets, bushcraft expert Johnny Crockett shows how to turn a weed into a feed. It's hugely versatile. It's brilliant. It's, it's, it's like a sort of a, like a Swiss army weed. As you can see, this is a nettle, Urtica dioca. Now I gripped it really hard at the base there and what I'm doing is I'm crushing all the stings. Um, so I haven't stung myself at all by doing that. Now, if you were to take the, the top, the smallest leaves, if you take them and dry them out, then you can make them into a nettle tea, delicious. If you take all the leaves, you can make it into a soup. 
if you uh, um, just have the stems, then you can make that into string. And in fact, during the, uh, um, during the First World War, a lot of German army uniforms were made out of, out of the, uh, the, the, the fibres of the nettle stems. The thistle has a surprise lurking underneath. It has some long sort of spidery roots, but those roots can be dug up. You cut them off and personally I prefer to bake them, but you can boil them. You just treat them like parsnips. Um, however, this is a lone man's root because it's packed full of inulin. And if you want to know what inulin is like, it's, it really does get to the guts. Um, so if you're not on your own when you eat it, you will be uh, very soon afterwards. But it's got starch and it's got carbohydrates. It's got the whole lot in there. So it's worth doing, um, but it can, if you eat too many, it can give you a bit of a belly ache. It's a sort of Jerusalem artichoke type thing. I would either boil it or I would roast it. Um, you could, I suppose, fry it, um, but uh, it, it needs some, some form of heat just to sort of break down the starches. Thank you, Johnny. And now from Devon, where he made that piece to the wider world of hunting and shooting online. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Adam Saunders sends me a link to his channel, Target Breaker, which is a feast of night vision. Here he is shooting rabbits between 50 and 75 metres with the night sight eagle. Ozzy Bushman is shooting non-native species. He calls it feral hog and wild dog, one shot, one kill action. Here's a film about a summer sport we're missing. The Precision Rifle League is more about community than shooting. So says the Precision Rifle League. An American rancher called Bo Beatty uses hunting for elk as motivation to become healthier after he is diagnosed with cancer. Randy Newberg profiles him, and the good news is that Bo defeated the disease. Off to South Africa for a Hyrax hunt in the Winelands, Matt Dubber from Air Arms Hunting SA is out with Gerhard Slabert from Air Hunters. Andrea Cavalier is on a driven wild boar hunt in Croatia, it's a project with Oliver Dawn of Halali TV. With a plea to stay at home, Potterek 81 hunting in Poland shows a medley of roebuck stalking in May, one of his favourite months for the sport. And finally, Jim Hook sends me his latest from Fair Game Pursuits, a cooking video about what to do with seeker backstraps. That's it this week. I put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film or a podcast channel, you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight. If you are starting your own YouTube channel at this time of corona stress, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and of course, best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show field sports britain is actually 7 p.m uk time every wednesday and you can back us you may have seen the graphic for the field sports nation if you want to join that happy band of around 500 supporters please go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash field sports nation again there's a link in the description below normally i say good hunting good shooting good fishing of course you know i won't because there isn't any but we hope there will be soon goodbye